All right, hello again, everyone. Welcome to today's TDL member forum for July of 2022. My name is Christy Park. I'm the executive director of the Texas Digital Library. And I'm so glad that you've all joined us today. As we gather in this shared virtual space, I wanna first acknowledge the physical places from which we're all joining, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. Our staff at TDL work fully remotely and we're all joining from uh, specific and different places in Texas and outside of Texas. But I joined from Austin in the central Texas area where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. And I invite you each to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to. Leah is also going to be posting a link to a site where you can learn more about uh, indigenous peoples in your area and across the globe. Here's our agenda for today. It'll follow the usual pattern. I'll give some updates and then we'll, um, Courtney and I, and actually, I think all of the staff here will be giving updates on services and projects um, going on at TDL. And then we'll have some community updates and time for questions. Uh, Courtney Muma, our deputy director, and Elliot Williams, our DPLA service coordinator, and Leah DeForest, our communications manager, will all be providing some updates today. And we have a couple of folks from um, member institutions who are joining to share updates on events during the community update section. So uh, a full agenda today. All right, moving on into our director updates. First off, a reminder and, and a little bit of news and a call to action about our um, digital librarian diversity resident position. So as most of you are aware, we're currently hiring for a three-year early career digital information professional librarian or archivist from a historically underrepresented minoritized community. Um, as part of and under the umbrella of the ACRL Diversity Alliance's Diversity Residency Program. So we're really excited about this. We're currently in the final interview stage stages of this position. We begin interviewing finalists today, um, which is pretty exciting. And as you know, this position will allow the, the person in it to explore and contribute to digital libraries within the context of the TDL consortium, its members and its services, and have opportunities we hope to lead and create and collaborate, grow, belong and discover within the profession and within our wonderful communities here within Texas Digital Library. So. Uh, as I mentioned, we're beginning the process of interviewing finalists this week. Um, now is the time when we need your help um, as we begin planning for a person actually joining us in the fall. And we've got two big opportunities for you and your institution to participate in and support this residency. So first off, we invite you to submit ideas for a rotation uh, with our new digital librarian. The first year of this program is rotation based. So the person in the position will plan their first year in collaboration with Courtney Muma, who's going to be the residency supervisor, to rotate through several big projects throughout that first year or rotations. So those rotation projects should be immersive projects that require two to four months project management and labor and each rotation uh, will have a rotation supervisor that could be you um, the residency the resident themselves will choose their rotations in consultation with courtney determined by their own interests and desired career paths um, and those rotations might lead to longer term work um, in the course of the three years of the position depending on their career goals, but we want to have a good number of rotation ideas and suggestions and folks willing to serve as res uh, rotation supervisors for the resident to choose from and get ideas from when they arrive. So we want you to be thinking about and making and proposing to us ideas um, for these rotations. We're going to be preferencing projects that I think first and foremost, allow the resident to benefit professionally and grow professionally. 
uh, from their rotation, but also importantly that are beneficial to the TDL consortium, not just one member institution. So ideally we want to be able to to work through our user groups and you know existing services and other kinds of member groups and collaborations but we want you to think broadly about what a rotation could look like as long as it's benefiting multiple institutions within the consortium um, we want these rotations to offer an opportunity for the resident to lead and we want to refrain from assigning fully formed projects at the outset unless the residency desire the resident, sorry, desires to engage in an existing ongoing project, in which case clear project objectives should be scoped. So it's a lot of information. We have a guidance document that we're going to share in chat. Um, we invite you to consult that just to get more information about how this works, the responsibilities of the resident and the rotation supervisor and everything else. So please take a look at that and um, we're going to let you know how you can submit ideas and and who you can ask questions of um, in a second. So the second opportunity here, we're asking for folks willing to serve as a mentor for the digital librarian in this position. And you know we're hiring an early career person. We want this experience to be fully supported and professionally meaningful for them. So. Courtney is going to be working with the librarian in the position to match them up with an appropriate mentor from our pool of willing folks from the community. So if you love mentoring new folks and young professionals and want to offer those skills in this way, we really want to hear from you. Um, we have so many wonderful uh, folks in this community who can serve in this role. So. If you have any questions about the diversity resident position, the rotation opportunities, about mentorship, if you want to tell us, raise your hand and say, I want to do this, or here's an idea, um, please send all of that and more to Courtney um, at uh, it just by email. So her email address is c.muma at austin.utexas.edu. That'll be in chat where you can grab it. And I think most of you know how to find her and us. Um, so please send your ideas and your, um, you know, your willingness to, to serve in one of these positions uh, her way. And finally, uh, we want to thank the members of our diversity resident planning committee, which is soon to convert into a steering committee for the position. These folks have been helping us since April to prepare for and plan for this position. Um, those folks are Courtney and, and myself are are on that committee, but also Alyssa Guzman, who from UT Libraries, she's actually the coordinator for the UT Libraries diversity residency positions. She's been wonderful, a wonderful resource on this group. Athena Jackson, the Dean of Libraries at the University of Houston, who has been our board liaison on this planning group. Stacy Johnson, who is a sciences librarian at Sam Houston State University Library, and Atiana Uriri, a metadata librarian from UT Rio Grande Valley. It's been a wonderful group to work with. Stacy and Atiana have also joined Courtney and me on the search committee for the position, as well as Ben Chang from UT Libraries. So we want to thank all of them as well for just, it's been a lot of work and um, uh, we really appreciate their service on these groups and I think we're in a good position to really provide a meaningful experience for somebody coming in. So uh, let us hear from you on this and we're excited to share more with you um, in the next month or so about who we're going to be welcoming to the TDL staff and the TDL community. All right. Next up, I wanted to just make sure that everybody's uh, aware of a couple of board meetings um, coming up for TDL over the next couple of months and, and let you know where you can access materials and information about these board meetings. Um, the TDL Governing Board is meeting on August 4th. Um, this is the group that provides strategic direction for TDL. It's comprised of library deans and directors. And, and currently we have seven 
uh, TDL institutions represented there for founding members of TDL with, who have permanent seats on the governing board. And then three at large members who are elected for three year terms. Um, that list of folks who are on this board is on the slide here in the top right. Um, at, our, at our next meeting on August 4th, which is just in a couple of weeks, the governing board will begin the process of nominating folks for one of actually two at large uh, positions. Um, Shauna Kennedy Wittar from West Texas A&M is concluding her three year term, so she'll be rolling off, we'll be filling that position. But we're also adding a fourth at large seat to the board. And so we'll be nominating someone for that position as well. This increase in representation on our governing board correlates to our increase in membership. So we have a mechanism within our bylaws as we add a certain number of new members, I think it's four, we, we will add a, another uh, seat to make sure we're um, reflecting the diversity of the membership uh, on this decision-making body. So we're excited to have new folks coming in. Um, our full membership is represented by the member board, which is listed there on the left. This is uh, this consists of the administrative head of each regular member. So every member who's not an affiliate. And you can see the list of, of those folks there. Um, they meet yearly in the fall. And we've got that meeting coming up on October 25th. We discuss issues of concern to the membership and we provide updates to them about um, our services and projects. That'll be a virtual, both of these will be virtual meetings again this year. So um, Leah's pasting, posting in chat, some links to more information about our boards. And just note that we put everything that we possibly can related to these board meetings including meeting notes and materials um, in our DSpace repository. We have a, a collection for those materials. So we invite you to, um, to stay aware and engaged of what the board is discussing and deciding on um, through those materials. Okay, I think that's it for board meetings. So let's move into our services updates. And I'll start with uh, DSpace and journal hosting. We don't have a lot of major news on the DSpace hosting front for this update. Just want to note that we will be holding our monthly DSpace user group meeting July 26th at 10 and hope uh, folks will join us if you're interested in that uh, in that service. It is an open meeting. And we are continuing on the journal hosting front to upgrade all of our hosted journals to OJS version 3.3. That project is well underway and we're working through all of our 75 or so hosted journals to make sure they're, they're updated and moved into a, um, an updated uh, hosting environment as well. So some, some internal and external facing changes coming with that. Uh, with that upgrade. Um, we're going to paste some links into chat with information about user groups and, and hope you can join those. The journal OJS group will also be meeting um, uh, next month, I think, as well in August. Okie doke. I think now I'm going to hand it over to Courtney to give us some <coughs> updates on, on other services. Thanks, Christy. Hi, everybody. I'm Courtney Muma, Deputy Director of TDL. My pronouns are she, her. Um, first, I'm going to start with some digital preservation updates. So I really hope to see some of you tomorrow at our digital preservation interest group quarterly meeting from two to three. We'll drop links into chat if you'd like to get it on your calendar. One of the things I'll be sharing at our meeting tomorrow is information about the upgrade to the Chronopolis Distributed Digital Preservation System, which is part of our digital preservation services. And I'll actually show you the new audit control environment or ACE dashboard we've collaborated on improving with the folks at UCSD. Hope to see you there. 
Additionally, Nick Woodward participated in a recent DuraCloud development sprint with its lead developers at Lyricis. That sprint included several security updates across every component in the DuraCloud architecture, new deployment tooling under the hood that updates nearly every component and precludes several persistent bugs, and especially exciting for our TDL DPS members, an update to the sync tool that improves performance and dependability. We'll have more information for our TDL DPS members soon about when we'll upgrade our TDL DuraCloud and then what they'll need to do um, to assist. And finally, I want to let you all know that I'm co-chairing the NDSA long-term conference planning working group that we're just getting started on. If any of you have ever served on the NDSA Digital Preservation Conference Planning Committee in the past, I'm inviting interested uh, ex-committee members to the working group to rethink the way that we do the annual meetings towards a more sustainable future. So please reach out to me with any interest in that. Moving on to research data management, the Dataverse community meeting occurred virtually last month. We're dropping a link into chat um, of our annual Texas Data Repository Steering Committee update. Um, slides from the sessions are freely available to review on the Dataverse 2022 meeting OSF site. Um, and the videos of the sessions that were recorded will be soon uh, available on the Harvard IQSS YouTube channel. And I'll send out an announcement about that when they're up. Moving on, um, let's talk about Vireo. So TDL is contracting with an Austin-based company, Nobility, to do an accessibility audit on Vireo 4 so that we can improve it over time on behalf of our members. We'll share the results with you once their work is complete. Additionally, Frank is still diligently working to refine and complete migrations of Vario 3 data into new instances of Vario 4 for our TDL Vario members. If you need an update about when your institution can expect to work with him, please do reach out to us. West Texas A&M is the most recent TDL member to go live in Vario 4. Um, and finally, US ETDA is in Cleveland this year from September 21st to the 23rd. Information and registration is available in the link that we're sharing in chat and the Vireo Steering Committee will be presenting a poster there as well. So now I'll hand it off to Elliot to share a few updates about our DPLA aggregation service. Thanks, Courtney. Hey, everyone. I'm Elliot Williams, he, him pronouns, and I'm TDL's DPLA Metadata Aggregation Service Coordinator. Um, I hope to see many of you next Wednesday for the Digital Collections Summer Love-In. Uh, this is an event I'm hosting like the first Digital Collections Love-In event that we had in February. Um, this is just going to be a chance to learn about and celebrate the amazing digital collections and repositories in our region, and most importantly, celebrate the work of all of our colleagues that goes into putting those collections online. Um, we have speakers lined up from a great range of institutions, including several of you who I know are here today. Um, we have folks from Texas A&M, Texas Tech, San Antonio Public Library, the Texas State Library and Archives, um, and a lot more. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun and a great chance to learn about the digital collections in our area. Um, registration is open. Everyone is welcome. So please, uh, I hope to see you there and please help us share with anyone you know who might be interested. And I also wanted to just mention briefly that TDL's quarterly DPLA harvest is happening this week. Nick Woodward and I have been working over the last few weeks to make sure that our members' records are being updated in DPLA. Um, TDL members are sharing several hundred new records with DPLA this month, which is always exciting. And once that harvest is live, I'll be posting a blog post on TDL's website with some uh, featuring some of those items. So be on the lookout for that. And I think that's it for me. And I will be passing it off to Leah with some OER service updates. Thanks, Elliot, and hi, everyone. This is Leah DeForest. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm TDL's communications manager and OER support service lead. I'm really glad you joined us this morning. And first off, I want to thank you all for your participation in our recent OER survey. Uh, we are really pleased with the number of and quality of responses. We're in the process of analyzing the results and we'll share that, uh, that report with you along with any recommendations for changes and improvements at an upcoming forum. And just wanna remind you that your feedback is critical always as we look for ways to improve our service to you. So thanks again. And just a quick reminder to please subscribe to uh, TDL's OER listserv so we can keep in close touch and we'll share a link in chat where you can sign up for all of our emails and select which lists that you'd like to receive. 
And on the Open Texas Conference front, we're uh, planning such an awesome open education conference, and I'm excited to get to announce the Open Texas keynotes to you. Our first keynote is Jasmine Roberts Cruz, who is a lecturer in the School of Communication at the Ohio State University, where she teaches in areas of public relations writing, digital activism, and campaign strategy. Her advocacy work centers on the experiences of people of color, women, and queer communities. And our second keynote speaker is Dr. Karen Kangelosi, who is a program director with the Community College Consortium for Open Educational Resources. She works with them to build open education leadership in post-secondary institutions across North America. She is also a co-founder of the Institute for Racially Just, Inclusive, and Open STEM. Dr. Kangliosi also has been a longtime street activist and community leader fighting for women's rights, LGBTQ rights, anti-racism, and social justice. So I really hope you'll take, um, take a minute and register uh, for this conference so you don't miss these fabulous keynotes. Registration is free and open to everyone. Um, we're gonna share a link and also just wanna um, mention here, many of you who are here today, are serving with that conference committee for Open Texas and just want to say thank you so much. You're doing great work and we really appreciate you. And next up, we have some um, community updates. We're going to hear from members from Texas Women's University and UT San Antonio who will share about their upcoming events. So Andy, you are up. All right. Uh, first thing, I'm Andy Tucker from Texas Women's University, and I'm chair of this year's uh, Cross Timbers Library Collaborative Conference that's going to happen next week. I'm going to go ahead and share our uh, schedule and a little bit about our keynote speaker. As of yesterday, we had 206 uh, confirmed registration, and so we're trying to get uh, the word out that this is happening next week. Uh, last year, we had 400, <laughs> so we're trying to kind of up our figures. Uh, this year, we worked hard to get a really good cross-section of proposals that uh, reflected academic, school, public, special, and other libraries. We have 22 sessions, so it's going to be a short conference this year. Uh, we're going to end by about three on that Friday. We do have a pre-conference with two sessions. The first session is grant-funded, and Amanda Zarang, our wonderful OER uh, person here at TWU, got that as part of a grant. And then there are going to be three sessions in that second session of the pre-conference about government information uh, service. And Tom Roaring is working on getting that. And so just be aware that that second session uh, that day, there are three different speakers on GIS information in that. That registration is handled a little differently because it is grant funded. So they're doing that registration a little bit different. But all of that is on our website. And if you have questions, let me know. I'll stick around for a while. Okay, so uh, hi everyone, my name is Emily Johnson. Uh, I'm the scholarly communication librarian at UT San Antonio. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys about uh, the STEM Librarian South Conference that we're hosting, unfortunately, on the same day as CTLC, um, same two days actually, so we hope you'll attend one of our conferences. Um, STEM Librarian South is a conference that's been around for about 12 years, uh, brings together information professionals and academics uh, from traditionally across the southern U.S., but this year we've got conference proposals from all over the country and Canada um, uh, to share ideas, current research, best practices, and insights um, for librarians in STEM education and research. So. <clears throat> We're very excited. Uh, this year, our keynote speaker is going to be Dr. Chris Packham, who's a professor of astrophysics at UTSA. And he was one of the select group of astronomers who was awarded time on the James Webb Telescope. So um, we're super excited to hear from him. Uh, we've been seeing the pictures that are coming out in the news. He's an awesome speaker. So if you're at all interested, please register. Um, the conference is entirely free on July 28th and 29th. Um, you can find the schedule of our other presenters on the website, and please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll hand it back over to Leah. Right on. Thanks, Emily and Andy. Thanks. You know, this is dueling conference time, so um, sorry to present so many wonderful choices for you, but there's a lot of overlap here and a lot to, to look forward to next week. I really appreciate 
all the work you're doing to put on these conferences and sharing with us today. So um, we have a couple of events coming up in August. The GIS interest group is hosting a community learning sprint. This will be a two-day co-learning opportunity led by TDL's GIS interest group on August 9th and 10th. Uh, at that two-day sprint, there will be uh, learning some basics about using Python and then how to leverage those skills to automate some GIS workflows. So really encourage anyone who's interested at, at any level to register and attend for that uh, co-learning, community learning sprint next month. And then later in August, our partners at the Texas Oral History Association are gonna continue their webinar series with us. This will be telling us about the TOLD, the Texas Oral History Locator Database, which utilizes different survey data provided by collection managers around Texas to identify their oral history collections. And so Stephen Seeloff from the Institute of Oral History is going to show us around that database, how to use it, how to share it with your researchers and students. So really hope you'll join us next month for these events. Um, and then on the screen here, you'll see some upcoming TDL meetings and events. It's our usual slate of member group meetings. Want to invite you all to join and attend as you can. If you see a highlighted um, uh, event that means it requires registration so please feel free to register as soon as you can share out with your campus partners and any non-tdl member colleagues in your network who might be interested uh, i've got a couple links here that i'll share in chat and really i think that's it for me and, and just wanted to mention in the next couple minutes christy when i hand it off to you that we had a question around the um, at-large position elections Okay, great. I did not see the question. Let me see if I can find it, or maybe you can read it for me. For sure. So, um, we had a question from Lauren at Texas State around um, how do the elections for the at-large positions work and how do the nominations work? And so I kind of tossed an answer in there uh, quickly between pasting links, but one of our questions was how to provide a name to nominate. I see. Okay, so, um, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating anything that Leah said in chat, but um, the nominations, we handle the nominations within the board, our board communication, basically. So the nominations come from um, members of the member board. And um, we have um, at our governing board meeting on October 4th, we'll form a nominating committee um, that's made up of the past chair of the governing board, as well as a couple other members. And that group selects a slate of candidates. Um, and we put forth that slate, but also call for open nominations from the board. So folks can nominate themselves or others um, within that, that member board. Um, and uh, we have a certain period of time for that process, and then we hold a, an online election. Um, each member institution represented by their administrative head or a proxy, if they've assigned a proxy, then votes for the their chosen candidates for the open positions. Mm -hmm. We usually do that virtually so that we can seat everybody at the member board meeting when it happens on October 25th. I hope sense. that answers. Yeah, yeah perfect. Bet. Thanks very much. Letting me behind the curtain a little bit. I appreciate yeah, it. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, so that stuff is kind of opaque sometimes. Any other qu questions? Uh, Joseph had a question about what's that window of time to nominate someone from the floor? We usually, um, it's usually pretty short, Joseph. Um, we, we usually allow a week or maybe two weeks for nominations. So um, if you have other questions, we have a, a little, maybe no time for them, but um, please, we'll, we'll allow it, we'll allow a little, an extra minute for questions, because while you think of those questions, I want to mention something, which is that last, um, 
month when we had our forum, we reminded you about our TDL suggestion box, which is an anonymous form you can use to provide feedback or ask questions. And um, we did get a couple of pieces of feedback through that suggestion box since last uh, month. And we said we would address those in the forum, you know, as they came up. Um, fortunately or unfortunately i don't know i think fortunately they were two very kind and encouraging pieces of feedback that we received through the suggestion box um, one really um thanking and um and praising leah and tau for their work with the conference planning for tcdl last year extremely well deserved um saying i don't understand how they were able to do everything that they did and, and the conference was great and another just expressing how much they love working with tdl um, and how positive and supportive um, the community is so thank you for those positive pieces of feedback we want to just say thanks we love hearing that of course um, we also want to encourage you to use that suggestion box for any constructive ideas or questions easy or hard that you want to ask but don't want to ask in this forum we'll be happy to take those questions and address them with the community here in the forum so just want to remind you about that um, opportunity from time to time and thank everybody we love working with you and uh, it's really you know the thing that makes this work um, so special and rewarding is is working with this community of folks so thanks back at you um okay i think we'll wrap it up there unless did i miss any questions I don't see anything. Okay. Well, we'll end on a high then and and wish you all a good a good week and a good month and we'll see you back here um, for the TDL forum in August. Bye everybody. Bye everybody.